Welcome to True Crime Case Files, the podcast that delves into the darkest mysteries and most heinous crimes. In today's episode, we uncover the chilling story of Jennifer Leah Trelegy, a hardworking woman whose life takes a tragic turn after unlocking the secret of her husband's gym group. Brace yourself as we navigate through the twists and turns of this shocking tale. Jennifer Lee Trelegy, a 34-year-old resident of Mesa, Arizona, was a dedicated and ambitious woman. In July of 2008, Jennifer's life seemed to be on track for success. She held the position of chief telemarketer at Credit Card's Four Kids, an operation said to be, quote, committed to helping children build a secure financial future. Jennifer's unwavering dedication to her job made her a respected figure within the organization. Outside of work, Jennifer was an active member of her community. She volunteered at the local homeless shelter, organizing food drives and fundraising events. Her selflessness and genuine care for others made her a beloved figure in Mesa. Jennifer's commitment to her community was even recognized by the local newspaper, the Mesa Tribune, which featured her in an article highlighting her efforts to make a positive impact. Beyond her professional and charitable life, Jennifer's warm-hearted nature extended to her family and friends. She cherished every moment spent with her loved ones, making sure to create lasting memories. Her positive outlook on life and determination to make a difference in the world made her a beacon of hope for those who knew her. But little did Jennifer know that her seemingly perfect life was about to take a dark and unexpected turn. Jennifer's story takes an unexpected turn when she becomes suspicious of her husband's involvement in a secretive gym group. Curiosity gets the better of her, and she embarks on a journey to uncover the truth. Little did she know that this decision would lead her down a path filled with danger and intrigue. As we delve deeper into this case, we will explore the details surrounding Jennifer's life, her aspirations, and the events that transpired in the blisteringly hot Arizona summer of 2008. Stay tuned for the shocking revelations that lie ahead. On a scorching summer day in July 2008, tragedy struck the peaceful suburban neighborhood of Mesa, Arizona. Jennifer Lee Trelegy, a 34-year-old woman known for her dedication and warm-hearted nature, met a gruesome and untimely end within the walls of her own home. The details of this heinous crime sent shockwaves through the community, leaving residents fearful and on edge. It was Jennifer's close friend, Stacy brewer Gaetan, who made the horrifying discovery. As she entered Jennifer's home that day, expecting to find her vibrant and full of life, she was instead met with a scene of unimaginable horror. Jennifer lay lifeless on the floor, her body bearing the brutal marks of over 30 stab wounds inflicted with a steak knife. The sheer violence and cruelty of the act sent shivers down Stacy's spine, leaving her overwhelmed with shock and disbelief. The authorities were immediately contacted, and a sense of urgency filled the air. As news of Jennifer's tragic fate spread, the community rallied together in grief and solidarity. Vigils were held, and heartfelt tributes poured in from friends, family, and even strangers who had been touched by Jennifer's kindness. The media, always hungry for sensational stories, descended upon Mesa, eager to uncover every detail and bring the truth to light. As the days turned into weeks, the weight of the unsolved crime hung heavy over the neighborhood. Fear and suspicion lingered in the air, casting a shadow over once trusting relationships. The community yearned for closure, for justice to be served, and for the memory of Jennifer Lee Trelegy to be honored. The authorities wasted no time in responding to the distressing call made by Stacy brewer Gaetan that came in on that fateful July day in 2008. A team of dedicated police officers swiftly arrived at the scene, ready to unravel the mystery surrounding Jennifer Lee Trelegy's brutal murder. Led by Detective Oliver Sequan, a seasoned investigator with a reputation for his tenacity and attention to detail, the police meticulously combed through every inch of the crime scene. The once tranquil home in the suburban neighborhood of Mesa, Arizona, now bore the chilling marks of a heinous crime. As Detective Kwan surveyed the scene, his eyes were immediately drawn to the bloodstains that marred the once pristine surroundings. The crimson trails seemed to tell a haunting story of the violence that had unfolded within her house. The once pristine surroundings were now stained with Jennifer's blood, a grim reminder of the brutal act that had taken place. The murder weapon, a steak knife from the kitchen, lay discarded nearby, 
serving as a chilling testament to the violence inflicted upon her. Detective Thompson and his team employed a variety of tools and methods to gather evidence. They carefully collected fingerprints from various surfaces, dusted for DNA, and meticulously photographed the scene from every angle. The detectives also interviewed neighbors, hoping to gather any information that could lead them to the perpetrator. As the investigation progressed, the media began to take notice. Local news outlets, such as the Mesa Tribune and Channel 12 News, reported on the shocking murder that had rocked the community. The police delved into Jennifer's personal life, discovering that Jennifer had recently become suspicious of her husband's gym group, a tight-knit community known as Fit Life Warriors. The group, led by charismatic lifestyle guru Bert Hensleybrecht, had gained a reputation for their intense workouts and exclusive membership. As the summer of 2008 unfolded, the residents of Mesa anxiously awaited justice for Jennifer Lee Trilogy. The pressure mounted on the police from people from all walks of life to solve the crime and bring closure to Jennifer's grieving loved ones. Devin Trelegy, a 38-year-old man with a charming personality, found himself at the center of a chilling crime that left a quiet suburban neighborhood in Mesa, Arizona in shock. As the investigation into the murder of his wife, Jennifer Lee Trelegy, unfolded, a dark secret began to emerge, threatening to unravel the lives of those involved. The police, determined to uncover the truth, focused their attention on Devin as the prime suspect. With his charismatic demeanor and ability to charm those around him, he had managed to maintain a facade of love and affection. However, beneath this seemingly loving exterior, a sinister side lay hidden. During the intense interrogation, Devin's emotions fluctuated between anger and an unsettling calmness. The detectives, armed with their questions and a desire for justice, probed into his possible motives. They delved into his personal life, searching for any signs of discontent or animosity within the marriage. As the investigation progressed, the police pieced together the events leading up to that fateful day in July 2008. They discovered that Jennifer had recently uncovered a secret about her husband's gym group, a group that Devin was deeply involved in. Whispers of illegal activities and connections to organized crime began to circulate within the investigation. The authorities meticulously combed through the evidence, leaving no stone unturned. They analyzed phone records, financial transactions, and witness statements, hoping to find a solid link to the crime. The murder weapon, a steak knife from the kitchen, was carefully examined for fingerprints and DNA, providing crucial clues that would help unravel the truth. The weight of the investigation bore down on Devin, his every move scrutinized by both the police and the public. The once charming man now faced a storm of suspicion and doubt. Would the evidence be enough to bring justice for Jennifer's untimely demise? Stacy Brewergaiton, a 36-year-old woman from Mesa, Arizona, found herself under the watchful eye of the authorities as a potential suspect in the tragic murder of her close friend, Jennifer Lee Trelegy. Stacy, known for her outgoing personality and love for adventure, was an avid gym-goer and enjoyed exploring the great outdoors of Arizona. In July of 2008, when the murder took place, Stacy's life took an unexpected turn as she became entangled in a web of suspicion and scrutiny. As a Jungian dream analyst, Stacy prided herself on her ability to interpret dreams and uncover hidden meanings. She often shared her insights with friends and clients, helping them navigate the complexities of their subconscious minds. She also relied heavily on her spirit animal, an ostrich named Angela Reese Crosswind. But behind her fanciful and carefree facade, jealousy brewed within her towards Jennifer, who seemed to have it all, a successful career, a loving husband, and a seemingly perfect life. The police interrogated Stacy relentlessly, leaving no stone unturned in their pursuit of the truth. They probed into her possible motives, scrutinizing her every word and reaction. The intensity of the investigation took a toll on Stacy, evoking a range of emotions from anger to a desperate calmness. During the interrogation, Stacy's mind raced with memories of her friendship with Jennifer. They had shared countless moments together, from their early morning workouts at the local gym to exploring the beautiful landscapes of Arizona. Stacy couldn't help but feel a pang of envy whenever Jennifer's achievements were celebrated, as if her own accomplishments paled in comparison. Stacy's life was turned upside down as she became the subject of public scrutiny. 
Her every move was dissected and analyzed by armchair detectives and gossip-hungry journalists. The weight of suspicion bore down on her, threatening to crush her spirit and tarnish her reputation. In a shocking turn of events, the investigation into the tragic murder of Jennifer Lee Trilogy took an unexpected twist. The once-respected workplace of Jennifer, credit cards for kids, was revealed to be a deceitful company operating as a pyramid scheme, preying on innocent and vulnerable children. This revelation added a new layer of intrigue and possible motive to the already twisted tale of murder and deceit. Credit Cards for Kids, a seemingly noble organization, purported to provide financial education for children. However, behind the facade of innocence, it was discovered that the company engaged in predatory practices, enticing children to obtain credit cards with exorbitant interest rates. These poor and vulnerable children were then subjected to relentless harassment as they struggled to pay off the staggering 45% interest rate imposed by the company. The revelation of this sinister scheme sent shockwaves through the community as parents and authorities grappled with the realization that such an exploitative operation had been operating right under their noses. The public demanded justice for the innocent victims ensnared in this web of deceit. As the investigation into Jennifer Lee Trilogy's murder deepened, detectives began to explore the possible connection between her untimely demise and the fraudulent activities of credit cards for kids. The police meticulously examined financial records, seeking any potential links between Jennifer and the company's downfall. They interviewed former employees, desperate to uncover any clues that could shed light on the motive behind her brutal slaying. Investigators speculated that Jennifer, being a dedicated and ambitious woman, may have stumbled upon the dark secrets of credit cards for kids. Perhaps she had uncovered evidence of the company's illegal activities, putting her in grave danger. This theory raised questions about who stood to benefit from silencing her permanently. As the investigation continued, the police intensified their efforts to dismantle the fraudulent empire of credit cards for kids. They collaborated with federal agencies including the Federal Trade Commission and the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, to bring the perpetrators to justice and protect the innocent victims ensnared in this heartless scheme. As the investigation into Jennifer Lee Trilogy's tragic murder unfolded, another key figure emerged, Martin O'Hurley, her closest friend and co-worker at Credit Cards for Kids. At just 24 years old, Martin was known for his quick thinking and unwavering loyalty towards Jennifer. However, beneath his friendly demeanor, a troubled past lurked, threatening to expose a side of him that no one could have anticipated. On the surface, Martin appeared to be an ordinary young man, dedicated to his work and always ready with a joke to lighten the mood. But as the police delved deeper into his life, they discovered a series of unsettling incidents that hinted at a darker side. Born and raised in Mesa, Arizona, Martin grew up in a modest neighborhood, surrounded by the desert landscape that defined the region. His childhood was marked by hardship as his parents struggled to make ends meet. Despite the challenges, Martin excelled academically, earning a scholarship to attend Mesa High School. It was during his time at Mesa High that Martin's troubles began to surface. He fell in with a group of rebellious classmates, known locally as the Desert Punks. This tight-knit crew, notorious for their wild parties and reckless behavior, quickly became Martin's new social circle. Their influence led him down a path of minor criminal activity, including vandalism and petty theft. As the questioning intensified, it was revealed that Martin had been moonlighting as a prostitute, offering his services to male clients in the Mesa area. This revelation sent shockwaves through the investigation, painting a picture of a man leading a double life. One of Martin's frequent customers turned out to be none other than Devin Trelegy, Jennifer's husband. The police were astounded by this connection, as it added another layer of complexity to the already twisted tale of murder and deceit. It raised questions about the dynamics between Martin, Jennifer, and Devin, and whether this illicit relationship played a role in Jennifer's untimely demise. The truth finally emerged, revealing Devin Trilogy as the cold-blooded murderer. Devin, age 38, had been leading a double life, hiding his involvement with a secret gym group called Fit Life Warriors. This group, unbeknownst to the community, was exclusively for men and served as a male-only brothel-slash-gay swingers club that would procure handsome male lovers for their members. This revelation shed new light on Devin's motive for the murder 
and exposed the dark underbelly of the seemingly idyllic suburban community in Mesa, Arizona. The police, through diligent investigation, pieced together the evidence that linked Devin to FitLife Warriors. They uncovered explicit messages exchanged between Devin and other members of the group, revealing a web of deceit and betrayal. It became apparent that Devin's involvement with Fit Life Warriors had become a source of conflict within his marriage to Jennifer. The discovery of Devin's secret life and his connection to Fit Life Warriors sent shockwaves through the community. Residents were left questioning the true nature of the seemingly perfect lives that surrounded them. As the police delved deeper into the connection between Devin and Fit Life Warriors, they uncovered a network of notable individuals who were part of this secret club. Interviews with club members revealed a tight-knit sex community that operated under a code of secrecy. The police worked tirelessly to gather information from these individuals, hoping to unravel the full extent of Devin's involvement and the motive behind Jennifer's murder. The arrest of Devin Trilogy sent shockwaves through the community as the reality of a heinous crime committed in their midst became all too real. The community, still reeling from the revelations surrounding Fit Life Warriors, came together to support Jennifer's family and honor her memory. The impact of this tragic event would forever leave its mark on Mesa, Arizona, serving as a reminder that darkness can lurk behind even the most seemingly idyllic facades. The trial that followed Jennifer Lee Trilogy's tragic murder in July 2008 brought the community together as they sought justice for the beloved woman whose life was brutally cut short. The courtroom was filled with tension and raw emotions as the prosecution and defense presented their cases, each vying to sway the jury's decision. The prosecution, led by determined prosecutor Angela Koss known for her track record of successful convictions, meticulously laid out the evidence against the prime suspect, Devin Trilogy. They presented the jury with a compelling argument, weaving together a narrative that painted Devin as a man driven by secrets and betrayal. The prosecution called upon witnesses who testified to Devin's volatile temper and his connection to the murder weapon, a steak knife found in the Trilogy household. The defense, represented by Cole Robbie, a skilled attorney renowned for his ability to cast doubt on the prosecution's claims, sought to challenge the evidence presented. They questioned the reliability of the witnesses, highlighting inconsistencies in their testimonies. The defense argued that there was no concrete proof linking Devin to the crime and urged the jury to consider alternative theories. Throughout the trial, Jennifer's grieving family sat in the courtroom, their eyes fixed on the proceedings. They clung to the hope that justice would be served for their beloved daughter, sister, and friend. Friends and supporters of Jennifer filled the gallery, their presence a testament to the impact she had on their lives. As the trial progressed, the media frenzy surrounding the case intensified. Local newspapers, such as the Mesa Tribune, dedicated coverage to the trial, providing daily updates on the proceedings. Television news stations, including Channel 8 News, broadcasted reports from outside the courthouse, capturing the public's attention. After days of deliberation, the jury reached a verdict. The courtroom fell silent as the jury foreperson stood and announced that Devin Trilogy was found guilty of first-degree murder. The room erupted with a mix of relief and sorrow, as Jennifer's family and friends processed the weight of the decision. Devin was subsequently sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. The sentencing brought a sense of closure for Jennifer's loved ones, knowing that the person responsible for her untimely death would be held accountable. The impact of the verdict reverberated through the community, forever altering the lives of those involved. Jennifer's memory lives on, not only in the hearts of her family and friends, but also in the collective consciousness of Mesa, Arizona. In the wake of the trial, the lives of those involved took a dramatic turn. Martin O'Hurley, Jennifer's best friend and co-worker, found solace in the support of his friends and family. He enrolled in a local community college, determined to pursue a degree in criminal justice. Inspired by the tireless efforts of the detectives who worked on Jennifer's case, Martin aspired to become a detective himself one day. Stacy brewer -Gaiton, Jennifer's close friend, sought refuge in the healing power of nature. She embarked on a solo hiking trip through the picturesque landscapes of Sedona, Arizona. The breathtaking red rock formations and serene desert vistas provided solace and a sense of peace amidst the chaos that had enveloped her life. Stacy documented her journey on her blog, Wandering Spirit, 
where she shared her experiences and reflections with her growing community of followers. Devon Trilogy, the cold-blooded murderer, was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. The trial had exposed the dark underbelly of the seemingly idyllic suburban community, leaving a lasting impact on its residents. The media frenzy surrounding the case had subsided, but the scars remained. As time passed, the wounds began to heal, but the memory of Jennifer and the events surrounding her tragic death remained etched in the collective consciousness of the community. The impact of the case had forever altered the lives of those involved, serving as a somber reminder of the fragility of life and the importance of justice. As we conclude this episode of True Crime Case Files, we are reminded of the chilling events that unfolded in Mesa, Arizona in July 2008. Jennifer Lee Trelegy's life was tragically cut short, exposing a web of secrets, deceit, and betrayal. This story serves as a haunting reminder that darkness can lurk within the seemingly ordinary, and that the pursuit of truth can unveil the most unsettling realities. Join us next time as we delve into another captivating true crime case. Hey, true crime case solvers, interested in more real-life murder mysteries? Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel. And do you have any thoughts about this case or have a case of your own you'd like us to investigate? Leave us a comment. Until then, stay safe through crime case solvers.